Hi guys, welcome to Exam Debug. Chris McKenna here again. Um, and we're going to be continuing on with uh, inputs and outputs. Um, and last time we looked at re uh, sorry, we previously looked at reading and writing to text files. Um, but as I said at the end, it doesn't always work out quite as planned. Um, so what people have come up with, and it's been around for a long time, is uh, CSV files. So CSV just simply stands for comma separated values. So inside of the file, it's saying the values will be separated by a comma. Yeah, so we could have something like this. Now, this is just an example. Uh, gamers, please don't yell at me. Yeah, I didn't mean to offend anyone. Um, so we've got Fallout 4. I'm saying 23,000 people have uh, downloaded it from my company. Um, and it costs twenty dollars. Far Cry Four, uh, twelve thousand people cost fifteen dollars. And EU Four, that's Europa Universalis, one of the best games ever made, um, has ten thousand. So not that many people for such a great game, but it also costs fifteen dollars. Okay, so you can see we've just separated the values out using a a, a comma, and for each new one we've used a new line. So that's the way we normally deal with this. Um, to read it in, though, what we can do is we can, people have made some uh, nice little modules. And so what we can do is we can import the import, import CSV. So again, comma separated values. Now we can use this nice little package to help us deal with this in a much nicer way. Um, so we read it in like we would do with a normal file. So with open and what have I called it? prices.csv. Now note, it's nice to do it as CSV. People can open stuff like this in Excel spreadsheets. You can export it or you can save an Excel spreadsheet as a CSV file. Uh, databases, you can usually output stuff as CSV files depending on the complexity. Um, so I sound like a salesman trying to convince you about CSV, but it is actually a really useful format that's applied in a whole bunch of different places. And okay, so anyway, we want to read it. So as we seen last time, when we read, we do R, write, W, and so on. And we're going to finish that. Oh, sorry, we do as. Uh, I'm going to call it CSV file this time. Okay, so now I need to do something a little bit different, and that's I have to employ my CSV reader to make it to deal with my CSV file. So I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it CSV reader. It's going to be what I'm working with. And I'm going to say csv.reader. And it's going to, we're going to have a look at the CSV file. OK, so I'm going to use the CSV reader to deal with my CSV file that I've opened based on prices.csv. Mm, it's a bit of a rabbit hole. <laughs> Let's do that again. So I'm going to use the CSV reader, that's the external package, to do something to CSV file. Now CSV file is the internal name of prices.csv after we have read it into our program. It's not the external file, the external file is still there. Yeah, it's just what we're working with inside of the program. Okay, hopefully that kind of works. Now, what we can do is we can then say for, let's say rows in CSV reader, we can print and uh, I keep doing S's up here, I should just keep it singular because it makes more sense. We can print the row. So save, run. Yeah, I got a silly big screen again. Okay, so but you'll see what we get as an output is quite interesting. What we get are lists. Yeah, so what's happening here is the CSV reader is taking this stuff and putting it into lists for us. Yeah, so it's taking these one, each line has become a list in its own right. And that becomes super useful. Yeah, so let, let's say we wanted to just print out uh, 
let's just prove that there are lists and there is not just text. What if we printed row zero? What do you think that would what do you think that would print? Hopefully, if I've got this right, it's going to print the names of the games. Okay, because this is zero, uh, zero, one. Two. I can count up to two there. Okay, zero, one, two. Okay, so row zero. If we did row one, oops, yeah, it's going to print out the number of purchases or whatever that number is. Okay, um, so we could use it to do something like that, and then we could make something here, like let's say let's call it games. Make a list of games, and instead of print. We could games dot append row say run. Okay, seemed to work. Obviously, didn't output anything. But then what we could do is at the end we could do we could so we've made this cool list of lists. Uh, I'll just show you if we print games. You see we've got a list of lists. If you don't understand lists of lists, you need to go back and have a look at the lists uh, tutorial. We've got lists of lists. Sorry, I'm not going to go back and explain too much of that. But it means we could do things like print games. Game 0 is going to be the first list. And then 0, let's have 0, 0. Should print out Fallout 4 because it's 0, 0. Or if we had 2, 0. One, uh, I don't know if you can see better in this. You see better here. Zero, one, two, zero is going to print EU4. EU4. Okay, so it's a really great way of, of passing data across to each other um, using a CSV file. Um, so we can pass data between people much more easy if you follow this. Um, and we can work with it inside of our program because as soon as we bring it in as a list of lists, um, we can work with it in a, a more tactile way inside of our, our program. One thing I would say be very careful of is don't put in more spaces than you need. Okay, so if we do hang on, games to zero, let's make this an if instead of a print. Let's say if games to zero equals equals EU four print game found. Yeah, so if we've done it that way, I think I'm saving it. I'll yeah, we'll do it this way just to be sure. We're going to have a problem when we run. It's not going to find it. Okay. Sorry, I'll delete this and try again. It's not going to find it because EU4 space is not EU4 no space. Okay, and this is something that I made a mistake on with a program when I was learning this stuff. It took me ages to figure out what on earth I'd done wrong. And it was just I'd put in silly spaces, I take out the spaces, the game gets found. Okay? So be careful with spaces in your CSV file. Um, so obviously maybe we want to add stuff to that object we brought in and then we're going to output it again. But we'll have a look at how we write to CSV files in the next video. Any questions? Post below, hopefully that wasn't a bit too weird or advertising. Um, what you might want to try is, uh, why don't you make, well, it could be a database, not actually a database, but you could make a, a file that stores information about something you're interested in um, and allows people to search for it. Uh, the one I gave my students was a movie database. Again, again, it's not a database, I know, but a movie database, so it had like the it had the film name, it had the actor, and it had the director. And if you did a search for the actor, it would read in the file first as a CSV, make a list of lists, 
and then it would say, who do you want to find? You'd say, oh, uh, tell me about uh, a movie, okay? What's the name of the movie? Uh, you know, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Ah, then it would answer, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless... Try again. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind was directed by... Mm, starring... Was it? Jim Carrey. Or starring Blah. Yeah, so maybe you could try experimenting with that, make a little movie database. Um, I might go through that later once we have done how to write to a CSV file. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching. Give me a shout with questions below.